Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 24, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. Well, the big news today is from Microsoft. Microsoft released an out of band security advisory and patch to fix a vulnerability in Internet Explorer's scripting engine. This particular vulnerability does not only allow for code execution, but it is also already being exploited in the wild, which prompted Microsoft to release this special patch. So it's probably something you do want to roll out rather quickly. Pretty much all versions of Windows that are currently supported all the way back to Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 are affected and patches should be available. As a workaround, Microsoft offers assistance in how to restrict access to the affected jscript.dll. However, implying these particular workarounds pretty much disables JavaScript in an explorer and that's often not a viable solution. So definitely apply the patch. And Cloudflare released a blog post with details regarding its bot fight mode that it just released as an option for its web application firewall. Once enabled, this bot fight mode should prevent malicious bots from reaching protected websites. Now, the way it is implemented according to Cloudflare is that first of all, of course, this particular bot fight mode will look for known bad user agents, but it will go way beyond that. It will do tricks like, for example, profile traffic to see if it matches the advertised user agent. And it will also use rules derived from its machine learning algorithms in order to block malicious bots. The real question, of course, it always comes up with features like this. What actually defines a malicious bot? We know there are bots that people actually like. For example, many websites rely on Google indexing their content tend to make it searchable. Typically, a malicious bot will first of all not identify itself as a bot, but try to mimic user agents that are typically used by regular users. Secondly, a malicious bot will also ignore any directives in robots.txt files and the like and spider websites that prefer not to be automatically indexed. Once Cloudflare identifies a bot as malicious, it will actually not outright block it, but instead it will more or less tarp it, the bot. This of course is likely going to make it more difficult for the organization running the bot to identify that their bot is no longer able to reach the targeted site. Cloudflare is also working together with some large hosting providers in what it calls the bandwidth alliance to disconnect bots that are hosted within the bandwidth alliance. Now we'll see how well this works and if these bots will be able to find any other hosting providers. And if you updated your iPhone to iOS 13, you may have noticed a number of applications that are now asking for permission to use Bluetooth. This feature has prompted a lot of questions from users and really what this comes down to is that a lot of applications have used Bluetooth in the past in order to get information about a user's location. The way this usually works is that these companies are deploying Bluetooth beacons, for example, in stores, and then they have their app check if one of these beacons is within range. In order to increase the privacy protections of iOS, Apple has now implemented a more restricted access to Bluetooth, so applications will now have to ask for permission before using this feature. And if you are using Forcepoint's VPN client, it's time to patch. Forcepoint fixed a rather easy to exploit privilege 
escalation vulnerability. The issue here is an unquoted search path. And what this really means is that a force points VPN solution will search in various directories for executables. In addition to the directory, it's supposed to search executables in and a user has to just place a binary in the right location in order for it to be executed. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.